my ghoulish foxes. Thank you so much for joining me here on my channel today. Today we're diving right into another look for Halloween 2016. This is my sepia toned queen of the damned makeup look that I had an absolute blast creating for you guys. Now it's a very long process, but it's very easy to do. All you're gonna need is a little bit of patience and a lot of creativity, and you'll be looking hauntingly gorgeous in no time. So let's get started. For filming today, I loaded my face with some foundation and slapped on some eyebrows. And for that one person who always comments, don't worry, I'm not naked. Now grab yourself a tan or nude pencil of some sort and begin mapping out your eye sockets. This is going to tell us where we are going to need to place our shadows in the eye department. Now if you have any questions or concerns about placement for these things, it helps me personally if I always have a reference photo for whatever it is I'm creating. So for example, today I had a reference of a skull in front of me. Now grab yourself a primer. Today I'm using my MAC Soft Ochre Paint Pot and I am going to place this inside of the little space that we have created. This is gonna help our shadows to stick. Grabbing my 28 color neutral eyeshadow palette from BH Cosmetics, I'm taking this tan color right here, which all of the shades that I am going to be using today are going to have red undertones to them, and I'm going to place this shadow all over this space we have sculpted out. Don't forget to place this all over the entire lid, below the lid, and we can't forget that little space there above the eyebrow. Now with the same palette, I'm going in with this rich deep brown here and I am going to begin adding some definition and dimension to this look. We're going to start by sweeping this in the crease of the eye and then we are going to go along our lower lash line and really smoke that out. What we're gonna wanna do here is build some depth so it looks like the eyes are sunken in as opposed to just normal eyeballs. Now I'm hopping over to my Milk Cosmetics Rust Stack and the first shade we're gonna be using is Rust, coincidentally. And I'm just going to further that depth into the eye. So I'm taking this shade and I'm putting it right below the shade that we've just used and stretching this onto the lid. Again, this is just gonna add depth so it looks like our eyes are sunken back into our head. And now moving from rust, we are going right into rot. This is the only one that doesn't really have um, any red undertones. It's kind of just a neutral color, but that's gonna work well with our reds. It's not going to clash. So I'm taking this and I'm just going to smoke this out right along my upper lash line and my lower lash line as well. And don't forget while you're doing this to let loose and have some fun. Grabbing a pencil brush, we're dipping right back into our shadow rust and we're going to sculpt out our cheekbones so we look nice and hollow. Okay, that doesn't sound pleasant, but that's the look we're going for. I'm going along the natural curvature of my cheekbone and about mid cheek slightly dragging down. This is gonna help it look really carved out. And don't forget to blend down from that top line, but make sure the top line is very pigmented and sharp. It's going to help with the severity of the look. Now moving on to the forehead, we're gonna begin sculpting out our temples. Now this is not where my temple holes actually are, if that's what you call them or whatever, but this is where having a reference photo is gonna come in handy. So I referenced my skull photo for where I needed to place my temple holes at, and then just like with the cheeks, we're going to blend out from that initial line. Now we're going to skip down to the neck for a little bit and build our skeleton structure. I'm grabbing a white face paint from my Paradise AQ Pro palette from Miron and I am beginning to build on our bones. Now this next part is gonna be completely up to you how medically correct you want to make it. I know for me personally, it's really time consuming to paint on each and every single bone that you have inside of your neck and your chest cavity. So for me, I am painting on three vertebrae in my spine, I'm painting on my clavicle bones, a little bit of my sternum, and a few rib cage pieces. When someone looks at this, they're going to know exactly what it is, and having that medically correct is not 100% necessary. 
So just so you get the fundamentals down, I think you're gonna be just fine. Now grab a shadow brush and we're dipping right back into rust to add some shading. Here I am adding a tiny bit of shading to the vertebrae, but only the pieces that jut out on the sides. They sit slightly further back on the bone, so I'm adding a shadow to give that illusion. And from there, we're only shading around each bone. Don't worry if you accidentally get some rust on these bones. You can always go back over it with the white later. Now with a definer brush and rotten hand, I'm just going to intensify our shadow. Besides the shading on the vertebrae, it was all pretty random, my placement. So it's up to you how intense you want your bones to be. Now let's jump back to the face and get started on that nose. Now a skull doesn't have a nose, but what it does have are nasal cavities. So I'm going to fill in most of the nose area and then on the bridge of my nose, I'm gonna have it branch up and come to two points. The best advice I can give you as we begin to outline the eyes is that unless you're a freaking surgeon, your lines won't be 100% perfect. And that is okay. Trust me, I've either given up or psyched myself out countless times, wanting it to be perfect, but in reality, it doesn't matter. Once you're completely done, no one is going to notice because we take things in visually as a whole. All I'm saying is don't sweat it if your lines aren't 100% perfect. Now I'm going to begin adding some finer details into this look. I'm going to go around the entire perimeter of the eye and make little tiny triangles. Now I'm going to begin adding a line along my jawline and curving it down just beyond the point of our contour. Now I'm going in and adding some leaves or flower petals, whatever it is that these are along that line, just to add some extra detail. Now I'm making a S shape on either side of my chin. And then I'm going in and adding a triangle in the center of my chin. And I would like to apologize for being out of frame for this one. I can't seem to figure out where the frame is. Now I'm grabbing a dotting tool, which is actually meant for your nails, but today we're going to use it for our face paint. I'm going to place dots along the perimeter of our triangle. Now I'm going in and adding some triangles on the forehead. I wanted three triangles and the middle triangle to be a completely solid triangle. I was gonna try to make it look like they were layered like through each other, but I'm just not that talented yet. We'll figure it out someday. But for now, I'm just going in and making the center triangle completely solid and grabbing our dotting tool and putting three little dots on the sides of each triangle. Now I am just briefly adding a little bit of a outline to our contour. And now it's time for the dreaded teeth. These things take so long, but it's really easy to do. It's just very time consuming. And all you're gonna wanna do is make little boxes for right now. 
just where your teeth are supposed to be. So you're just basically mapping them out for right now, and then we're gonna add some shading, and then we're gonna go back in and define them later. Now it's time for some detailing on the face and we're gonna use rust to do so. So I'm just taking my little definer brush and I am going to begin going around all of the designs that we have placed on the face. So here on the nose, I am just highlighting or actually low lighting the entire perimeter of the nose. And then I am going to go into all of these little triangles we have created on the eyes and I am going to shade those as well in a V shape. Then we're gonna hop down to those little leafy guys on the jawbone, and I am going to just fill those in and add shading where I feel is needed in the same way on the chin and the forehead. Now, if you, again, accidentally get some rust on any of this, you can always just go back over it again with the white to brighten it back up. Now we've finally made our way back down to the teeth. I'm gonna shade in between each and every single tooth and then lightly blend upwards from the actual tooth itself, like the top part of the tooth. We're gonna have this look like a shadow behind each and every single root. Now finally, we need to go in and add our roots to our teeth and we can be done with our white face paint. All I'm doing is re-highlighting each tooth and then dragging some streaky little lines away from that so it looks more like a root of a tooth. Grab a black eyeliner and tightline your eyeballs and add a few coats of mascara to dim lashes. And the eyes wouldn't be complete without some creepy cool contacts. And for my hair, I have back combed my Ice Queen wig from Lush Wigs. And to top this all off, I've made an awesome rose headband and I just made it with some gold nail polish, a headband, and a few fake roses. And that's it for this makeup look, my foxes. I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, don't forget to leave a like and share this with your foxy friends. And if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe and become a member of our foxy, foxy family. And as always, I love you guys so much, you have no idea, and I'll be seeing you very, very soon. Okay, bye!